Hello, everyone. Hello, and welcome to our AEOP alumni panel. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. My name is Matt Hartman. I'm the Educational Content Manager here at eCyberMission, and I've seen, seen some of you around. Hopefully, some of you have seen me as well. I want to thank you so much for uh, being a part of this. Um, what you are in for today is a great opportunity to hear from some folks who are uh, alumni of different AEOP programs. Um, and I'm going to let them talk to you a little bit about what that means. And uh, if you don't know what AEOP stands for, hopefully you will, or maybe you can see it written right there or on the screen over there. Either way, um, that's what you're going to be hearing about today. You're going to have an opportunity at the end to ask some questions as well in the chat that we will then put to our panel. And the panel will be happy to answer those questions that you have. So you can be thinking about those as you go along. Or if uh, you have a question during their talk here and you don't want to forget about it, you can throw it in the chat and uh, we will address it at the end. All right, so I would like to introduce to you your host for the panel today, and that is Dr. Greg Stone, the director of AEOP membership. Dr. Stone, take it away. Thank you, Matt, and welcome everyone. It's really great to be here in eCyber Mission, and congratulations to everybody to, for getting to the nationals. Uh, that's uh, it's a big step. I am here today with three members of three amazing alumni, some of whom came from eCyber and some of whom came from other programs. And we'll talk to you about uh, the Army Educational Outreach Program. I, there we go. The AEOP membership, I wanted you to know who we were. Uh, functionally, everybody who participates in an AEOP program, including eCyber Mission, is a member of the Army Educational Outreach Program, as are all of the past participants. And we have more than 300,000 in some programs, significantly more, but over 300,000 current and past participants are members and alumni. So what exactly is AEOP? Uh, some of you may know this, some of you may not. It depends on on how uh, the programs that you've been involved in beyond eCyber. AEOP membership and AEOP as a program represents a whole host of programs, including the eCyber mission that you're part of now. There is also a program called GEMS, Gains in the Education of Mathematics and Science, the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium, Junior Solar Sprint, Camp Invention for very young students, Unite, and then a whole series of apprenticeship programs for both undergraduates, high school, and pretty soon postgraduates as well. So a AEOP really be needs to be seen as a whole family of programs. And as you continue in your STEM careers and your STEM education, you have an opportunity to first participate in eCyber and then continue on to participate in other programs. And some of those programs we'll talk about today with uh, the exciting alumni who have joined us. I want to first introduce you to Prathana, who will discuss uh, a little bit about herself and what she did. And, and uh, so Prathana, tell us about yourself. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Prathana. I am a rising freshman at the University of Illinois in Chicago uh, through their guaranteed medical program. And I first became involved with AEOP through Camp Invention in elementary school. Um, and after that, I went on to be a participant in eCyber Mission throughout sixth through ninth grade. And it was one of the best times of my life. I learned so much, got to experience so many different uh, fields of science and also discovered my passion for biology and for medicine. So after participating in eCyber Mission for several years, I went on to participate in the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium or JSHS, doing some research projects there. And now I'm heading off to college and hope to continue stay involved in AOP. So that's a little bit about myself and outside of science, I really enjoy Indian classical dance and singing in my free time. Well, welcome to the panel and uh, you have done some amazing things and I know you're, you'll be an inspiration to the, the folks coming up now. 
I'd like to introduce you to Jaheen. Jaheen was, uh, is an alumni of our apprenticeship programs. Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, thanks Greg for the introduction. My name is Jaheen and I participated in the AUOP SQL program back in 2015. SQL stands for the College Qualified Leaders Program. And so I found out about the program through um, Virginia Tech, which is my alma mater, where I studied electrical engineering and there was an opportunity to um, do some research in the electrical engineering field um, that summer. And so I um, took on the internship and it was such a great experience. It opened up so many different research opportunities and also um, some opportunities to present my research um, to the larger um, uh, United States conventions um, pertaining to the field that I was helping out in. Um, since then, I graduated from college back in 2016, and I'm so excited to continue participating with AEOP and um, meeting all of you. And again, congrats to everybody that's um, made it this far in the competition. Well, welcome, Jaheen. And I'd like to invite all of the eCyber folks out there to subscribe to our YouTube channel, AEOP Membership. And if you do, one of the amazing things you'll see on our YouTube channel is a feature film uh, about Jaheen and her experiences in AEOP and STEM. And you'll see four other members as well up on the AEOP um, YouTube channel. And I now, now have the pleasure of introducing Maria. Maria, tell us about yourself. Hi, um, thanks for the intro. Um, my name is Maria and I'm a rising senior, senior at UC San Diego. Um, I'll be studying robotics and mechanical engineering there. Um, and I participated in the ESI mission for a year in 2018. And it has opened up a lot of opportunities for me. Um, it's allowed me to get interested in um, robotics, in um, engineering, obviously, and um, public policy specifically related to technology. Um, and in high school, I've been exploring a couple of those fields as well. I'm a really active member of our Model United Nations team and aquaponics research. Well, welcome, Maria. Uh, Maria is a, a newer member of our uh, council, and we're really glad to have you. So I'd like to start off the questions that I have for the panel with a pretty simple, straightforward one. It may be complex, however. Uh, were you always interested in your current area? And how did the AEOP programs that you participated in actually influence your future choices? So I'm gonna start the question by asking this of Maria and then all the other panel members can join in. Yeah, um, so my specific project in East Cyber Mission related very heavily to panic attacks and PTSD. And um, through developing our product and working with people who could potentially benefit from our product and our, and our engineering design, I really realized how intertwined engineering can be with our daily human functions. I mean, we're speaking about a, a panic attack that is such a vulnerable state for somebody to be in. And that really ignited my interest in engineering. Um, I've always been kind of more of a people person and seeing how those two feels, how, how our human vulnerabilities in engineering can very closely relate really inspired me to continue on that on that, on that road of engineering, specifically robotics, um, and how that relates to, to you know, our daily habits and our human vulnerabilities. So yeah, I think that project really um, inspired me to continue in the field that I am going on. Jaheen or Parthana? Yeah, I think for me, it's very similar. E-Cyber Mission is where my interest in science was channelized. And just being able to do projects in engineering or biology in different fields made me understand which ones I like better over others. And also being able to connect with mentors and advisors of different fields also showed me that the power of mentorship is super amazing. 
Uh, I remember in one of our e mission projects, we got to study in a lab with a mentor who I then was able to intern under uh, several years later in high school. So being able to maintain those connections helped me solidify my interest and then also learn so much through other experiences. And Jaheen, you came to AEOP a little bit later than, than some folks do. Uh, what was your experience in this area? Yeah, and I actually would like to take it back a little bit. Um, when I was in middle school and high school, similar to so many of the participants in our call today, um, I think I knew that I enjoyed math, I enjoyed science, and I excelled in those courses um, in grade school. However, you know, I wasn't quite sure, like, ah, oh, should I do engineering? Should I do, you know, should I study, like, or pursue medicine? And I quickly learned that I did not have to have it all figured out then. You know, I got to college. College. And once I was, um, you know, picking my majors, I was like, okay, let me just see how engineering goes, see how I like it. And um, throughout my internship experience with AEOP, that's where I was kind of um, solidifying my decision. Like, yes, I enjoy this application of the things that I'm learning in school. And that kind of influenced me to, you know, continue pursuing that major and really, um, you know, learning to love it and enjoy it even more. That sounds fantastic. Um, we're gonna take a little step now into something different while we watch a video. Uh, Dr. Stone, unfortunately, we can't hear the video right now. So I think maybe if you unmute yourself, we may be able to because we could hear it at the beginning. Let's try this again. I've unmuted myself and hopefully you'll be able to hear this. So we'll we'll start it again. M uh, is just an abbreviation for science, technology, engineering, and math. So it's basically the combination of the four or the individual four that you go into. AOP is the Army Educational Outreach Program. It's a program that institutes multiple competitions and multiple um, programs that help kids want to develop their yearning for STEM and really just invite kids from all grades to join and put in all their work to invent something that they think will change the world. When I was 14, my teacher actually approached me and three other classmates of mine and told me to enter this competition sponsored by AUOP. Us four competed and we submitted a product called the Soteria Bracelet. It was a bracelet that was supposed to like save countless lives over just recording your like heart rate, all the information that has to do with um, bodily functions and send it back to your phone in a rapid pace so that you always know what's going on with your body. And we took that as far as nationals, it was crazy. The competition actually awarded us $16,000 and they divided up the money by $4,000 savings bonds between each four of my teammates. AOP after competing just opened up opportunities and it just made me feel like I had somebody looking at me for more than my age, but like my worth. They see past of what you can do based on your age or like your qualifications. They just see like you as a person can contribute so much. At the lab, we actually store a lot of our new innovations and inventions. It's kind of, we like to call it classified, but it's not really classified because we're 16, but we sit down there for more than three hours and we just punch on this one idea to make sure that it's as best as we can make it for the competition. Because at the end of the day, it's not about winning the competition, it's about making a product that we can actually think about putting into the world, that can actually innovate the world and help people. If you're out there sitting there thinking that you can't accomplish something because you can't pay for it, you can't, you can't go through the school for it, you don't have the means to do it, you just have to find something 
that you're passionate about because when you find that one thing, nothing is going to stop you from getting to that one point, I promise. Well, thank you for that. I apologize for technical difficulties, um, but that was uh, Noel. And you'll be able to see more about Noel as well as Jaheen and three other STEM Fantastic people on our YouTube channel. So if we go back to our panelists now and start uh, additional discussions, the, the, the rising video that you just saw sort of introduced our individual alumni and their journeys in STEM. And it, it is an inspirational journey in many different ways. So what I'd like to ask you now, and we'll start with Jaheen, what sort of challenges have you faced as you took your STEM journey and how did you overcome them? Because everybody, no matter what their background, has challenges and it's important to think about how we overcome them in order to uh, pursue our STEM dreams. So Jaheen, why don't you start with this question? Thanks, Greg. And I really love this question because I think um, one of the biggest challenges that I faced in my STEM journey was, you know, getting into college and then picking my major and seeing that I was, you know, one of the very few females in my classes. And so I think um, that was also like a confidence thing too, right? I would go to class and I would be one of the only girls. And, um, you know, in terms of just like, having the confidence to ask for help or, you know, being able to um, speak up in class to help answer questions, things like that. So um, I think something that really helped me was joining different organizations. And I think this applies to everybody, no matter where you are in your academic career, whether you're in middle school, high school, college, I think joining clubs, joining organizations and finding your support group to find people that, you know, will empower you and find other mentors who have kind of been through the same uh, journey or, you know, taking the same classes can really help you uh, build your confidence and find, um, you know, some guidance to help you make those decisions and um, keep you kind of motivated. So I think that really helped me. And um, I really wouldn't be here today without all those resources that I uh, met along the way, whether they were teachers or um, mentors or even just friends in my courses. So you kind of developed a, a peer network as well as a mentor network, sort of a, a whole, uh, just like it would be in business basically, or in any sort of organization. And that sounds uh, like a really winning strategy. Uh, Parthana, how about you? Yeah, kind of along those lines, uh, when I was conducting all of the experiments with my team for eCyber Mission, sometimes we struggled with not having the financial resources or the equipment we needed to really test our ideas, since a lot of times we were just doing it in our homes or in our basements, and we hit a lot of roadblocks while trying to test. But by not being afraid to ask for help and by reaching out to mentors and unexpected advisors, we were able to overcome that and get some resources that we needed to be able to test. So I think that was one of the biggest challenges that we faced is uh, having that fear that we're not going to be able to do the best that we can because we don't have the resources that we need. But by asking for help, we were able to overcome that. Excellent. And Maria? Yeah, um, I think one of the bigger challenges for me in my STEM journey was definitely like K-12, like the K-12 curriculum for me. It didn't really align with the way that I learned, especially through programs like East Cyber Mission. I personally realized how much of an experimental learner I am, as opposed to like a textbook or a reading um, kind of learner, like not knowledge acquisition through those um, sort of ways. Um, and that was definitely reflected through a lot of my peers as well, um, that kind of disconnect um, between what students really wanted to learn or how they wanted to learn um, and what was actually being taught in the classroom. And so over the last four years, um, STEM education reform has definitely been an area of my interest. Um, and being part of like my district's curriculum board, I was able to see how difficult it was to change that kind of curriculum, not because teachers or staff members were uninterested, but because logistically it's very challenging and it's very expensive to transition curriculum to make it more modern. Um, and that was very challenging, um, but working with that board, working with a board of teachers and administrators and community members, 
we were able to make us, you know, some tangible difference, um, investing into different programs um, that were more experimental based and taking money out of places that we didn't think was going to be a great modern investment. Um, so yeah, just kind of modernizing STEM education, especially for our younger generation of students was certainly challenging, but very valuable, hopefully. So if you take all of these things together, it really sounds like uh, teamwork is important. Uh, not it, The team may be across the continent, the team may be around the corner from your house, but whether it's redeveloping curriculum and working together as a group to try to uh, improve STEM education in schools, whether you're working on a particular project and trying to overcome the difficulties in that, it sounds to me like all of the, the great participants in the eCyber Mission Contest this year uh, already have the, uh, already have begun the notion of teams and developing networks. And the, the best thing that I can suggest for you as well is to think about the idea of networking. You might not think about that as a sixth or seventh grader, but the larger you can build your network with groups and people and teachers and mentors and programs that will allow you to expand what you're doing, the better it will be. And AEOP can really help with that because of the various different programs that are available. So if you're really into looking at engineering and solar power uh, vehicles, we've got uh, Junior Solar Sprint. If you're interested in everything from the humanities to science to math to and, and writing and researching, there's J uh, JSHS. And, and it continues on and on. So I think you've already started a, a really good part of your journey developing the teams and networks that you have within eCyber. So you're, you're well on your way to um, improving your STEM education and improving that of the rest of the country. So if we go then to Prathana to begin, what was the most influential part of your AEOP STEM program experience? And within that, did you have any aha moments? And by an aha moment, I mean where you you just you sort of did something or saw something or read something, and you said, "Ah, this is it for me," or "This is uh, this is why I'm doing this." Um, how would you uh, how would you answer these sorts of questions? Yeah. So the biggest influential part of my experience was coming to nationals in the cyber missions in 2015. It was just so amazing to be surrounded by such ambitious and driven students. Everyone there really wanted to make a change in the community and they wanted to use STEM to do that. So I remember like on the judging day, seeing all the projects, the boards and the presentations, and it was amazing to see the variety in the ideas that everyone had and just how passionate everyone was in what they were doing. So I loved being in that com community and also getting the feedback from professionals and mentors who really cared about trying to take our ideas forward. So hearing their advice and being surrounded by that community was the biggest and most memorable part of the AUP experience. Perfect. Uh, Maria. Yeah, um, so as I mentioned earlier, my cyber mission project had a lot to do with biomedical engineering and and panic attacks and in and, and those sorts of fields. And among us four team members, that was not really an area of our expertise. We really didn't know anything about those things. It was just something that really interested us. And so we were forced to reach out to experts of all sorts of fields of industry professionals, people who were trying to make something similar to what we were trying to research. Um, and most importantly, we reached out to a lot of people who our product could potentially benefit. And that experience helped me really understand that engineering is not something you can do alone. Um, engineering, to be a good engineer, you need to reach out to community members, to experts, um, to industry professionals. And that made me really excited um, for my future of engineering, um, to reach out to people and to get to know people from all walks of life. That was really exciting for me, yeah. Thank you, Maria. And we have another engineer on our panel as well, um, Jaheen. Yeah, 
Thanks, everyone. Um, I think the most influential part of my STEM experience with AUP was being able to um, take the research that I was able to help out with during my AUP internship and present it to the International uh, Radio Science Meeting, where we had professionals from all over the world come in and um, you know present their ideas. And I you know helped represent the United States uh, during that uh, conference, and it was just really cool to have such a rewarding experience and um, feel really valued by the AUP team and my mentors and um, just being able to take my research to the next level. Um, I think I had those aha moments my entire summer. Um, the semester prior to um, my internship, I was just beginning to learn, sorry, beginning to learn about electromagnetic fields in my courses. And so when I got to AOP, like throughout my summer, I'd be running these simulations on the computer. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I was reading in the textbook. So it was just really cool to apply exactly what I was learning in school, like in person, right in front of my own eyes. And um, it it was just, you know, really cool and kind of reinforced the idea, like I was saying before, to, um, you know, continue pursuing those studies and it helped me uh, determine like what my favorite topic within my major was as well. And one of the things that I would, uh, I know you've all had experience, all of our panel members have had a significant experience presenting projects and papers and so forth at various conferences, and so have our audience members having gotten to nationals. And what I would suggest is that the more practice and the more presentations that you do, the better it will be. Because one of the, one of the great things about uh, the AEOP STEM experience is it is very practical and it's very hands-on. And it, it's all about communication. Uh, we need to be able to communicate our ideas to one another, as well as communicate them to people who may not be STEM experts. So continue what you're doing and, and, and keep it up and, and you'll be able to uh, do some amazing things in the future. So I will ask uh, the question of um, Jaheen first. If you had to give our audience one critical piece of advice, whether it was for them today or, or for tomorrow, what would that critical piece of advice be? Yeah, I really like this question. Thanks, Greg. Um, I think my piece of advice kind of is twofold. One being that, um, you know, be open to any and all ideas. You really don't know what's going to come your way. And um, I don't think that you need to have everything figured out right now. So in your classes that you're in and the projects that you're doing and all the organizations or clubs that you're involved in, just have so much fun and get as much experience as possible. Um, because during this time, you you have the awesome opportunity of time and you can really see what you like, what you don't like. And it's really awesome to be able to figure that out earlier on um, rather than later on. So I think that being one and two, um, you know, if different opportunities come your way and you're able to take them, just say yes. You really don't know where they're going to take you. Um, so I think um, that would be my uh, piece of advice. I would say that is sage advice indeed. Uh, I know my own STEM journey, uh, I started out in in the K-12 schools, and probably unlike many people on this call, I didn't enjoy mathematics. I didn't seem to do well in mathematics. Uh, I never wanted to have anything to do with mathematics, and yet I became a statistics professor. So you never know what's going to happen when you start and when you end. You meet mentors and you, you engage in problems and your whole life can change with those simple uh, aha moments and being open to the experiences. So Parthena, uh, tell us about uh, your piece of advice. Yeah, so my piece of advice would be just to do your best in everything that you commit to. I think sometimes we get into the loop of, oh, but what if it doesn't turn out? good or what if we're not successful and sometimes that end result's not always in our control but just knowing that you did your best you put all of your effort uh, into that that it should that's enough I think um, so commit to what you do and really enjoy that and give your 100% effort into it 
I would sure agree with that. And it, when you think about re research, sometimes not getting the result you wanted or hoped for is actually better than getting the result. So never think of uh, a sort of a failure, if you will. Uh, if a, an experiment doesn't work or if your project doesn't work, don't think of it as a failure. Think of it as a next step, uh, as, uh, as something that will be bigger and better. Maria, what would your advice be? Um, I guess this is more like a big picture piece of advice, but I guess when I look at some of the larger STEM issues today, I think it's really rooted in a lack of interdisciplinary collaboration and consciousness, whether it be like polarization on our algorithms and social media or ethical sourcing of engineering products, or even like the biases in our, in our health informatics. I think a lot of it is, is rooted, is, stem from, is stemmed from like this lack of consciousness amongst engineers and scientists. And so I'm sure a lot of the people right here today, there you guys are gonna be the future of engineering and science. So I urge you as you, know, you continue on your STEM journey to, to, to be conscious of, your, of the implications of your engineering, to, be, to have an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary understanding of your engineering and to really be a part of a new generation of conscious and aware engineers or scientists or STEM professionals, whatever it may be. I love that advice. Um, and I agree with you because we are part of the world, part of humanity, and STEM does not exist in a vacuum. And in fact, I guess this is a, a question that I will throw out here. It's a, a different question, not on a slide, but uh, STEM has become STEAM. And so I would ask uh, all of our panelists uh, if they have any thoughts about the notion of the importance of arts in STEM, which makes it STEAM, and how, uh, uh, how you think that STEM should be expanded in that direction. And we might as well start with Maria since you kind of led this, this question off. Um, I mean, that's like a huge question, but like personally, I'm really interested in film and I love to make like little short films with my friends and we use cameras and we use editing software all the time. And it's really interesting to see how technology and coding and all of these really complicated and multi-leveled um, engineering and technological um, concepts are involved in in filmmaking and cameras and editing and all of these things. So that's really kind of a personal example for me. Yeah. That's great. It's a sort of a holistic experience. And, and I, I, I think that's important for all of our audience members and our panel members to ensure that uh, STEM and your career fit in with a holistic person because some of you enjoy music, some of you enjoy drama, some of you enjoy uh, bike riding, who knows? Lots and lots of different activities and lots of different interests in addition to your STEM interests. Um, Jaheen or Parthena, do you have any thoughts about STEAM versus STEM? Yeah, I can go next. Um, I actually really like that they're adding art to um, the acronym because I think as a kid, like I was very artistically motivated. Um, I went to so many different art studios and learned how to, you know, draw in different um, mediums and stuff like that. And so I think that um, with that being said, now in the professional world, we like to get perspectives on a problem from all different angles. So I think it's really important to include, you know, everybody as part of a solution. Um, yeah, I think that's what I have to say about that. Awesome. Yeah, and to add on to that, I think art and communication go really hand in hand since some people benefit from not having to see so many words on a screen and having a picture instead. So being able to communicate your results, whether that's science or anything else through an art medium like an infographic or a diagram is super helpful. So having that art integrated into STEM, I think will help with the science communication aspect. I would agree. At this point, I would like to thank our panel members for answering my questions and for getting us started with the discussion. Again, I would like to uh, help inspire you, if you will, 
to subscribe to the AEOP membership YouTube channel. We have uh, biweekly webinars. Um, we offer, we have an award show that happens annually. We have a STEM career series that's coming up in July, which I think you all might find uh, particularly interesting. They're short 10 minute interviews with various scientists um, from everything from biology to engineering, to mathematics, to psychometrics, um, many different careers for you to think of. And that will start uh, next month. So you're, you're welcome to join us live or, and you can always watch on YouTube. So with that, it's now your turn for participant discussion, questions and answers. I'm going to stop sharing my screen at this point and um, Matt, take it away. Excellent, so yeah. Uh, so anybody that is out there, any of our audience members, if you have any questions for any of our particular panelists or for the entire panel, uh, go ahead and throw those in the chat right now. And uh, I'll kind of try to keep track of those as, as they come flying in here and going by. Um, I wanna say thank you also to our panel while we're waiting for some questions to come in here. I really appreciate you uh, being here today and talking to all the students here and the team advisors and everyone who's a part of this right now. Um, uh, a, special, uh, a special thank you to those returning to East Cyber Mission. Uh, thanks so much for for being a part of it and coming back and talking about your experiences. And for those of you that are out there, uh, I hope you're watching this thinking, hey, maybe I can be on that panel in a couple of years, uh, because indeed you could be. So um, I, hope you're, I hope you're thinking about that and remembering your experiences so that you can tell um, all the kids who are here in a couple of years about uh, what happened to you while you were at NJNEE and uh, all the stuff that you did in eCyber Mission. All right, well, uh, boy, I stalled for some uh, for a good amount of time there, and uh, I have not seen any questions yet. But um, I, we are going to give you a, a little bit longer to uh, to put some questions in the chat there if you have some. Um, this this is your big chance, folks, to find out all of the secrets because th these ladies know the secrets to STEM right here. Oh, I've got a question. There it is. See, I knew I knew I could get one. Um, here's the question that I have. In your experience, are there any AEOP-based internship opportunities for high schoolers to experience organic research involving artificial intelligence? Ooh, very specific. I, I, I will start by trying to answer that question the best place to get that information, that specific information, I'm going to say probably yes, but the best place to get that specific information is through the website, because you're asking a very specific question about the type of internship you're looking for. And there are many internship opportunities for high school students. So we'll, we'll start there. The best place is at the website, www.us aeop.com. And if you go there and go to the apprenticeships, you will find a whole host of information about how to apply and how to contact them. And the best thing to do for that question is to send them an email and say, hey, I'm a high school student. This is what I'm interested in. Um, is there a place for me to, to do this? And I'm pretty sure that they'll be happy to work with you. I'm going to also ask Jaheen to, I know she may not have specific information about this, but she was an apprentice and uh, an amazing apprentice at that. So if you have anything to add, please do. Yeah, I was just going to jump in and say that, um, you know, there are so many different internship opportunities available. And, um, you know, even though you might be looking for something very specific that you're interested in right now, you might run into something that is, you know, way out of something that you weren't expecting to find. So definitely be open to, the, to, sorry, to those opportunities, like we mentioned before, and um, you'll see where you land. All right, excellent, thank you. Um, and uh, Dr. Stone, you said that's usaeop.com, right? Correct. Okay, good. I just wanna say that as many times as possible. USAEOP.com. Excellent, let's go on to our next question here. Uh, it is, if you could have done something differently in your e-cyber mission experience, what would you have changed? 
So I guess this goes to our East Cyber Mission alum. Yeah, so one thing is, I think I would have started earlier. Um, I think every year we kind of waited till October to kind of get started with our project, but East Cyber Mission lets you start in April or May itself. So having that extra time to work on the project and take it forward would have been helpful. And then also making use of a, a, like professional expertise would have been helpful. So I know we relied a lot on the internet and like journal articles, but we shouldn't forget about all those people who have gone through that road and who, have, who are experts in that field. So contacting them, reaching out to them and getting their advice would have been super helpful. Yeah, um, along those along very similar lines, like I really wish I had networked more with some of my peers, like any cyber mission, like the other teams, like the other members. Um, I mean, these are, you guys are students with so much knowledge and so much excitement for engineering. And I wish I had like written down more contact information or something because like, I would love to, I would have loved to just maintain that community that we had at the national conference. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much. So yeah, so keep that in mind, everybody. Get that networking going on. All right. Uh, here's a question for you. Are there any good summer camps for middle schools for STEM? Dr. Well, Stone? From the from the AEOP perspective, yes, the GEMS program. Um, it's a little a little problematic right now because as you know, we're sort of coming out of the pandemic, but still in the pandemic. There are some camps that are open now, physical, in-person, uh, and some that are still virtual. But yes, there are. I would check out the uh, GEMS program in particular. That is the best program for middle schoolers for, for camp type activities. Uh, and again, uh, if you go to the website, uh, www.usaeop.com, one of the nice things about the website is you can say, hey, I'm interested in this. I'm this, uh, I'm this age and uh, what can I do? And the website itself, the questions on the web will help direct you to opportunities in your area because GEMS isn't in every single city across the country and it may be in your area or may not be. But in addition to that, if there are other programs outside of AEOP, uh, you can connect through that through the Department of Defense because the Navy and the Air Force also offer things, and they may happen to have a program, a summer camp or otherwise, in your area that AEOP doesn't. So it's it's another good opportunity to network. Very good. USAEOP.com, right? Yes. Okay, just saying. I want to say that one more time. All right, uh, here's another question. I believe someone mentioned how AEOP helped them develop an interest in public policy. In what areas does STEM connect or collaborate with public policy fields? I believe that was Maria. Yeah, I really love that question because that's like definitely a field I'm really interested in. Um, but specifically from East Cyber Mission, I think my project um, relating to like panic attacks really opened my eyes to how much technology is going to interact with humans. And when that occurs, it's important that we have public policy that will protect, um, you know, our human vulnerabilities as technology is going to, like, continue to inter intertwine with that. Um, and, like, I'm sure all of, a lot of you guys are going to go and um, engineer and create, you know, working companies and, and all of these really incredible things, places. But I also think that there is a space for a lot of really analytical um, science and engine, people interested in science and engineering to create the public policy that's going to properly govern these enormous tech corporations and these very more invasive um, technologies. So, you know, I think there are a lot of fields in which those two places interact. Um, I think the big one right now as of late is like how corporations take data um, and how we can properly protect and the security and privacy of consumers of like, I don't know, like websites, for example, or social media platforms. So there's, I mean, there's so many fields that public policy and technology intersect. Um, but I think one thing to note is that we need more public policy, we need more policy that properly protects our citizens. 
Um, and if that's something that's interested, I really urge you to explore those fields um, to really maintain those checks and balances for, for the future of technology. I would echo that because uh, people like Maria and people like yourselves are in the perfect position to do that. It's important that when public policy is made, that it's made in conjunction with experts in the field who, who know what they're talking about in addition to simply passing a bill or a piece of legislation. It's important that uh, you connect with, with the public as well. So I appreciate that. Very good. All right, this next question, I, I actually know the answer to this next question because I've been on over to usaeop.com and, and I've checked it out there. Um, but the question is, are there any competitions for students after ninth grade? Yes, absolutely. There are competitions. Uh, we had uh, an alumni challenge a, a summer ago uh, that was open to middle and high schoolers. And as far as traditional programs, we have things like the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium, which is a different kind of competition. It's a research competition and it's not a team competition per se, but it's a competition as well. So yes, there are definitely programs um, before and after ninth grade. And I think one of our panelists participated in JSHS, is that, is that correct? I believe so, yes. Who was that? Yeah, I participated in JSHS um, in ninth and 10th grade, and it's definitely a very enlightening experience similar to eCyber Mission. It's individual, where you carry out like a, a more structured research project. Uh, you can do it in a lab, you can do it in your school, wherever you're able to, and then put together a paper, submit that to the competition, and then they'll invite you to present it live for a panel of judges and uh, they have a whole day affair where you can either use a poster or use a PowerPoint presentation and then share your ideas and get uh, awards for those. So it follows a similar structure with a regional level and then a national level. And I definitely recommend that you all try it out. Very good, very good. All right, uh, let's see, what do we have next? Oh. Um, well, this is back to our, our eCyberMission alumni. What was your favorite part of the eCyberMission experience? I mean, honestly, for me, my favorite part of that entire experience was just getting so close with my team members. Um, like, they're some of my best friends in high school today, um, and we still kind of share that same zeal for engineering and science and so just getting to know those members is just invaluable to me honestly any other thoughts on that yeah along with that i i know when we were experimenting we had to retry the experiment so many times because it kept failing and then finally seeing it succeed was super amazing. Um, so that was one of my favorite parts, seeing that after all this work, we were able to actually create something that works, so. Excellent. Uh, let's see, our next question here, how has being uh, AEOP alumni changed your careers or influenced your futures? I can start by saying that I think um, what AUP is doing here, you know, providing all these opportunities to all the students, it's so it's so awesome that you all are here and um, still working together as teams and working towards something that's going to really impact your communities. You all are doing such great work, and um, this is a great stepping stone into your the rest of your academic and professional career as well. I just wanna echo some of the things that have been mentioned earlier, but honestly being able to, um, you know, see something like see an issue or see something that I'm interested in and just come up with a solution and talk to those experts and just kind of like break that original barrier, that like barrier to entry towards engineering really helped me envision myself as an engineer in my future. So kind of like going through those motions, it really allowed me to continue to use that like engineering process throughout the rest of my life, like whether it be through like internships and stuff, like those engineering skills that I learned in eCyber Mission have stuck with me today and has 
really influenced the direction I wanted to go in as an engineer, but most importantly, it like allowed me to see myself as an engineer um, and definitely just continue on through that path. And in addition to the engineering skills, I, for me, it's helped develop um, like leadership and communication skills that are going to be useful in any career. So developing that resilience, flexibility, that is something that you can't take away from you. So all AEOP programs, I think, help develop you as a whole person that is going to go succeed in whichever field you go into in the future. So this this kind of goes along with that a little bit. Um, what what should we, meaning students, do in high school to get into competitive engineering schools? I mean, I don't think there's like a like a textbook way to get into a competitive engineering school, but I think ultimately, like you just need to find something that you are really interested in. If there's a specific field that really excites you and just really follow that. Um, because I think that passion will translate um, to wherever you go. So just find something and genuinely be interested in it, interested in it and just continue that as long as you can go. Um, yeah, so just follow the things that really excite you because that will always translate on a resume or an application or whatever it may be. Any other thoughts on that one? Yeah, I was going to say that, um, you know, if you have opportunities to pursue leadership positions in any of the clubs that you're involved in, um, like Barthana was saying, that's a great opportunity to get some exposure to soft skills, you know, communication, um, how to lead others and empower others. Those are all great skills to have. And I think, um, you know, being true to yourself and what you really want to do, finding things that you're passionate about, like Maria was saying, when you're writing those college applications, um, you know, those aspects of the things that of your activities, those will really shine through in those essays that you're writing. You know, if you're trying to be somebody that you're not, if you're trying to study something or get into a school that you don't really care about, um, it's pretty apparent. So make sure that, you know, you are um, being true to yourself and, um, you know, that will really shine through in those applications. Parthena, did you have anything to add? Yeah, I think just echoing the same uh, thoughts of do what you love and commit to that and really see through on that. Because if you are just doing things for the sake of putting it on an application, like it can really show through and you won't enjoy that experience either. So do it because you enjoy it and not for the intention of getting into a college, but really because you want to learn something out of it. That's the best advice I could give. Do what you love. But on another piece of advice, um, on the AEOP membership YouTube channel, which I have mentioned maybe once or twice before, we do have a couple webinars uh, where our panel members interview faculty and, and folks from universities that talk about the application process, kinds of things you might want to talk about in letters, uh, these sorts of things. So if you go onto the YouTube channel, and into the webinar section, the person-to-person -person webinars, you may find a couple webinars that will help you with the application process. Very good. All right, I think we have time for one more question here. So I'm going to make it this one that just came in. What is an exciting thing that you have done in your STEM career so far? One exciting thing, the most exciting, let's give the most exciting thing that you've done. Um, I don't know, it's like a huge question to ask, <laughs> but um, I think something I'm like personally really proud of is like the aquaponic research that, you know, we've been able to do, like me and my, my peers and I have been able to do. Um, so like in middle school, I was introduced to aquaponics in the classroom actually, and that entire process was really exciting for me. Um, aquaponics, by the way, is like an agri agricultural system that doesn't use soil, um, just to let you guys know. Um, and personally, like for me and those couple of other peers, we were really excited by the research that we were able to do. And so we built tanks across school in schools across our district. Um, and so just being able to share that engineering experience that I had when I was young, was made me, was like a very, made me really proud, I guess. Um, 
yeah, so just kind of sharing similar educational experiences. I don't know if it was very exciting, but it certainly made me proud. Sounds pretty exciting. One exciting thing I, I will remember is uh, when my team and I got to present to our mayors our idea, and that was super amazing. I never thought I'd be able to do that. And being able to share our STEM product uh, with the community and then actually get some advice on how to improve it was super amazing. So that's something I'm always gonna remember. And I think for me, I was uh, mentioning earlier that I got to uh, represent the US and share my research with other um, competitive members in our field from all over the world. So it was really cool to um, be able to share that and get some good feedback on how we can improve our product. Um, I think that would be one. And then I think just, graduating with my degree in engineering was um, so exciting. I, you know, being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel and achieving that was um, really good. So for anybody who's doubting yourself or, um, you know, feel like it's so far away, it's going to come so fast and you're going to be able to do it. I'm going to throw this question out. Uh, we have two minutes, um, but I didn't want to miss it. After eCyber Mission, what's Big steps did you take to continue developing your project, network with professionals, and continue your interest in using STEM uh, for to benefit the community? So this would be for Maria and Parthena. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things I did was join the AEOP Alumni Council, which is where you get to help contribute to some of these programs and also get to network with people who have been through AUP programs and who are super passionate about it. So that was one thing that I really enjoyed doing and getting to know more people through that. And in relation to my project, I know my team and I tried to further develop the product and then try pitching it at local uh, competitions to raise some money. So that was another really big step we took to taking the, pro the project forward and trying to get it to the next level. Um, yeah, I think we, our team also did very similar things. Um, but I think the number one thing for you guys is to really maintain those relationships you've built with mentors. I mean, as we've kind of echoed a lot, like networking is very important. Um, building those relationships for whatever you may need in the future, whether it's just an educational or just like a, like a mentor kind of relationship, that's always very valuable. Um, but specifically for us, um, I think it's kind of important to note that you guys have done a lot of research in your projects. You guys, I mean, I don't wanna say you guys are experts, but in some regard, you guys are very knowledgeable and that is something you can take wherever you go, whether it's an internship you guys wanna to apply to or some project you wanna work on, just taking those experiences and the knowledge that you've gained from your experiences today and over the past few months, and building off of it. Maybe it may not be the exact same project, but that similar field or just trying to build off of the knowledge that you've gained is, is very important. Excellent, excellent. Definitely true, definitely true. Well, I wanna say thank you again to, uh, to Dr. Stone for, uh, for being here and hosting this, to our panel, to our alumni here who have come back to talk to all of you. Thank you to all of you for coming and uh, taking part in the session for your wonderful questions. And um, that's gonna be it for today. So thank you very much again and uh, take care. Um, students, we will see you tomorrow. And um, alumni, maybe we'll see you next year. We'll see. Bye-bye and thank you. Take care, everybody.